Hey guys and welcome to a brand new series of Factorio. So, as many of you may know, I've obviously extensively played Factorio, so I would like to say that I'm, uh, I'm pretty decent at the game. I'm pretty decent at the game. So, what I've decided to do is, for the launch of Factorio on Steam, is that I would play a vanilla playthrough and try to show you guys the most efficient way that I know of playing the game. So, I'm going to, there's going to be a few builds that I'm going to do that uh, many of you will recognise from my other series. And I'm going to try and take a more tutorial-esque stance on it and teach you guys what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, uh, talk about ratios, etc, etc. And there should be little supplementary, little supplementary tutorial videos that go alongside any videos that I do um, where I talk about stuff. But if I don't go too in-depth to it, I'll probably do a little tutorial video and link it in the description below so you guys can go and have a little look at um, some more in-depth things. But yes, let's get started. Factorio, what's the uh, what's the aim of the game in Factorio? Well, the aim of the game in Factorio is to make a rocket defense, rocket defense platform, which we can't do right now, so I haven't got it. Research, but you want to make a, a rocket defense platform, which uses a rocket silo, and you launch a rocket up into space that basically shoots all of the biters, which are the local inhabitants of the planet that you're on, and makes it suitable for colonization. Yes, this game is fucking horrible because what you're trying to do is murder an entire species on a planet that you've just landed on. So, how do we do that? Well, the aim of the game in Factorio is all to do with automation. So what you want to do is you want to get everything going as fast as possible. When you first load in, you'll notice that you get uh, eight iron plates, you've got uh, a shitty pistol with some regular mags, a burner mining drill and a stone furnace. So the first thing that you want to do, or the first thing that I always do, is make myself two iron pickaxes. I've just done that by right clicking. It makes up to five, depending on the amount of stuff that you've got. Uh, next, what you want to do is grab a uh, burner mining drill, and I'm going to shove it on the coal because I want to start generating some coal right now. Because that'll make things a little bit quicker. Actually, no, I'm not, I'm not going to generate coal. What I'm going to do is I'm going to shove this up here on the iron. This is the, the start of Factorio is actually one of the, the parts that I dislike the most. Uh, it's just, it just takes a while. So what I've just done there is I shift right clicked. If you, whenever you right click in this game, it will, uh, I forgot that I'm supposed to be going tutorial-esque. Uh, whenever you right click in this game, it sends half of an item. So shift right click sends half an item directly into there. And then what I've done is I picked up the item with left click out of my inventory and I control left clicked it into the furnace, which sends all of that item from my inventory into the furnace. If you just left click it just opens up the inventory. And so what I've done is I've put the burner mining drill down here with some raw wood. And the raw wood's going to be used as a fuel. The burner mining drill will, it's, it's a burner mining drill because it uses a fuel source instead of electricity. Uh, that pumps it out, puts it into the stone furnace, the stone furnace also uses a fuel. The iron is then turned one to one into iron plate. And the ratio for, for burner mining drills to stone furnaces is a one to one. Alright, and then that's me got some iron plate. So what I do now is I want to create some more burner mining drills, which requires five stone a piece. And I want to get at least ten, so i seen, yeah, there's, <laughs> there's a tiny little block of stone here. So I'm going to hover over this and I'm going to hold down the right mouse button, which means we use our little pickaxe to grab some stone. So what I want is I want 10 stone. Um, currently, my campaign is not modded except for one mod, and that is the More Light mod. It's designed for YouTube because uh, the way that YouTube encodes videos, it makes things a lot darker. So what it does is instead of at night, you normally get like a little flashlight, a little V flashlight. Uh, what the More Light mod does is it makes it just a big circle so you guys can see exactly what's happening a bit better. Because I can, I can see in the dark, but YouTube can't. Which is real annoying. Uh, right, I need two of them. I need a burner mining. I need... Uh, there we go. More iron plates. That's two burner mining drills. The reason I'm making two burner mining drills is so that I can make a, a nice loop. So what you can do is, uh, as you can see here, we've got the little, you see the little arrow? Um, that shows you where the item will come out. So if we do that, then that will output the item into this drill, which will output the item into that drill. So what happens is it goes into the, the fuel slot. So all that I need to get this going is a single bit of coal. Shove that in there, and that single bit of coal will mine more coal than it expends, which will go into this one, which will start that one up, mining more coal, 
and it creates a loop where these things will run perpetually until there's no more coal and it will slowly but surely accumulate coal which I can then shove into other stuff. So let's grab some more and I'm going to want another five stone. Alright, which I can then create. Oh, I'm going to need. Um, I'm going to need some more iron plate as well. So I'm just going to control click on these, which takes the coal out. And then I'm going to. Oops. And I'm going to click on this to put it into my hand, as you see. And then I'm going to control right click to put half of it into the burner mining drill. And then I can't control left click because this already has wood, but there we go. I'll just control left click it into here so that we can. Get enough coal to make us some more iron plate. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some more stone. Because I want to upgrade my coal production right now. So we need another 5 stone which will make us some more stone furnaces. So as you can see stone furnaces use 5 stone. Funnel mining drills use 1 stone furnace. So yeah, that's exactly what you need. And it shows you that I need 3 iron gears and 3 iron plates. But if you look at the bottom where it says total raw, that means that if I click this button and have 5 stone and 9 iron plates, it will make me the iron gears and it will make me the stone furnace. I don't need to do that, but if I've got any then immediate parts then that works as well. Alright, so let's make another one. And let's get going. This is uh, by no means going to be a speed run. Let's just uh, dispel that just before it gets started because uh, yes, I'm good at the game, but no, I'm not. I'm not a speedrunner, so I won't. Uh, I won't be able to to show you any epic speedrun strats. But the next thing I want to do is let's mine up another five stone. And what we're going to do is we're going to get this stone to output straight into a wooden chest, so we need to. We don't need to keep mining this stone like a plebeian. I need some more iron, please. Oh, I forget. I'm so used to playing with a, a mod, it's called Long Reach, which means I don't need to be right beside things to pick them up. There we go. Alright, so now put that into a stone chest and we need to go and pick up some more uh, coal. So as long as you keep these going into a circle, you can add on as many as you like, just to fill the entire coal seam if you want. But one of the issues that you're going to have is that you may be generating pollution. And pollution's a, a factor in the game that can really, really screw you over. Uh, so basically, like I, I mentioned previously about the, the enemies of the game, the biters. Okay, so what what the biters do is they are the, the locals, the local inhabitants of the, uh, the planet. They basically look like fleas, like zoomed in fleas. They're horrible looking. And they really hate pollution. <clears throat> So the more pollution you get, the more they will come after you. And if you're, uh, they don't notice you until your pollution starts hitting their bases, their homes, the biter bases as we call them, the spawners. Uh, so once once your pollution starts hitting the spawners, that's when you start to see bad shit. So they will send out little attack forces that will come and beat the shit out of you and destroy your stuff. Um, they primarily focus uh, things that create a lot of pollution. So they'll focus on like your power, your uh, uh, radars actually have got a, a quite high aggro rating. So if you've placed any radars they'll focus that. But yeah, they'll, they'll basically try the hardest to, to mess you up. So if you, basically what I've just done there is I push left alt and what that does is it toggles uh, more stats and it's really helpful. I don't, like, you can't really play the game without it on. So you put that on, you can see in my mini map, you see this red thing, this red plume. That is our pollution, so anything that's red is pollution, and if that red goes over a biter base, that's where you start to have problems. So you kind of want to deal with your pollution. You don't want it to get too out of hand. Right, so the next thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to create some electricity. And to do that, we're going to need some boilers and we're going to need steam engines. The way that you work it is it's 13 boilers to 10 steam engines. That's the... Um, I would say the perfect ratio, it's not It's not super perfect uh, because the 13th boiler is pretty pointless, you can do 12 to 10 just just fine. It only takes it up by 1 degree, uh, that's 1 degree C. So basically you want you want enough boilers so that it keeps it at 100 degrees C through your steam engines, which is obviously the boiling point of water, um, so that your steam engines can actually function properly. So basically you, 
all you need to know is that 12 to 10 works at 99 degrees, which is fine, you just won't get peak efficiency out of your steam engines, but only by 1 degree, so it's not really that important, but if you just do 13 to, 13 to 10, it works just as well. Like, you just get that little bit of extra efficiency out of it. <clears throat> and you only, you only pay for, like, that extra 1 degrees, so the boiler won't use the exact same as any other boiler uses in fuel. It'll only use for that extra 1 degree. As far as I'm, I'm led to believe, that may be wrong. I may need a... Uh, um, I made a reference there. <laughs> Alright, so we're gonna we're gonna hit some of the trees. Um, you should know that trees are the the most bullshit and annoying thing in the world. So, uh, hate to all trees because they are just a pain in the ass. They're a pain in the ass to move through. They get in the way. They're difficult to get rid of. So basically, whenever you can, destroy the fuck out of trees because they're assholes. Right, we're currently sitting on 8 boilers, and like I said, I want 13. Uh, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So right click makes you 5, left click makes you 1. Uh, I think it's with control right click makes you as many as you can, but I prefer just to right click multiple times. Okay, so now we've got our 13 boilers, uh, let's make 3 steam engines, and what we need now is an off-pour off shump. An offshore pump, Jesus. English, not my greatest, uh, not my greatest language. Uh, it's the only one I speak, but still not my greatest language. Right, let's grab ourselves some iron plates, and what we can do is we can make ourselves some, an offshore pump. Uh, what I need is another one of these, another one of these. Okay, uh, we're gonna have. Some copper getting smelted and produced, and we need some coal. Let's put a full stack of uh, coal in each of those. And that'll start making us some copper plate. Which we need for an offshore pump, because we need electronic circuits. So that'll be three copper plate to make one offshore pump. The offshore pump is required to, uh, to get us water to go into our boilers, because obviously, steam engines require water. Let's put an offshore pump here. I think I might shove our... Uh, our electricity creating stuff, like our steam engine and stuff, just straight up here. You kind of need to start planning out your, your build. I could shove it here as well, but then it's going to be in the way of that. And obviously we need water, so I need to pull it off of a water source. Yeah, I think we might go here. Seems to be the, the best idea. Alright, so let's put our offshore pump there. Get rid of this tree because it's a tree and it's an arsehole and it's, uh, that's a given. Alright, let's do our water pumps there and start doing our steam engines. Right, it's going to be a bit of a, a bit of a trek over from our coal though. Down here, we do have a, there is a little bit of coal down here though. Which I could use, that would make things a bit easier. Uh, right, so the next thing that we're going to need is we're going to need a lot of iron plates. I need some stone as well. We're going to need a lot of iron plates just in order to make uh, enough transport belt so that we can fuel up this stuff. Right, so I need that. I need you here. For now, anyway. We shove that in there. And let's make some transport belt, so... Transport belt is the, the first main thing in, uh, in your journey towards automation. Transport belt will transport something, uh, a resource, around the place. Um, what I've done there is I middle mouse clicked it, because that reserves the slot in my tool belt. If I take this out, you'll see it's got that little, the little icon and the blue around it, that means that that slot's been reserved for my transport belt. So I'll be able to, whenever I get transport belt, I'll just go straight into that slot first and then into my inventory up to a maximum stacks, a stack size of 50. Alright, uh, so what I'm going to need is, I'm going to shove one burner inserter, so what a burner inserter does is, 
that will pick up anything off of a belt or the ground and put it into wherever the arrow is pointing. So it goes from the flat side to the arrow pointy side. Burner inserters are good for picking up coal and things because they they don't require electricity, but they self fuel. And so they will pick up a piece of coal, put it in themselves, and then put it in something else. Like if it's if it's got no fuel, they always start off with enough fuel to do one action. Oh, actually, I didn't realize that there was uh, a piece of closer coal there. So there was a piece of coal on the ground there. Uh, let me just drop it on the ground. You can drop stuff on the ground with Z. You don't really use it that much. But if you want to pick something up off the ground, you hold F and run your character over it, and they'll pick it up. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the little burner mining drill here. Why? Because it uses less, uh, it'll use less transport belt to get stuff over. Okay, let's get a stack of 50 coal and shove it in there. And uh, let's start running our belt over. So it's pretty obvious the way the belt works. You, you run it and it goes in the way of the, the directions of the arrows. It's not rocket science, not by any stretch of the imagination. The entire game isn't really that difficult. It's just very daunting. When you first come across it, it's like, holy shit, what did I do? And as long as you take it slowly and kind of try and work out exactly what's going on and, you know, watch my series, <laughs> it'll, uh, it'll be pretty easy for you to pick it up pretty quickly. And eventually you'll be, uh, you'll be dropping into my comment section being like, ah, oh, Steejo, you're doing this wrong. You should be doing it like this. Which is pretty awesome, because I love it when you guys uh, give me tips, give me little builds and stuff, give me info on why I'm doing stuff wrong and what I can do to improve my gameplay, because that's the just the type of gamer that I am. I'm always striving for perfection, do remember that. So if I'm doing something wrong, feel free to call me out on it. I know a lot of, a lot of YouTubers don't like that, but I am not one of those. Unless you're being a dick about it, then I'll call you out on being a dick, but don't be a dick. Nobody likes a dick. Ah, uh, right, I could do with... So now we've got electricity, actually, which uh, I haven't mentioned, so... You can see that these, uh... That my steam engines are blinking, that they've got no plugs. Uh, so what we need to do is we need to get some small electric poles, but I'm requiring... Uh, I'm requiring? That requires some copper. So let's nick over here and we'll pick up some copper out of our little furnace that's been... Rapidly smelt me some copper, it's got 87 copper in it, that's beautiful. Uh, oh, that's the maximum amount that I can have. Uh, look at that, one maxed out in here as well. We've got four stacks of coal just waiting for us. Amazing. Uh, right, let's limit this wooden chest to the amount of... Ah, no, actually. You know what? Just just keep keep going with that. I'll just keep you fueled up. I don't care about if I have a full chest worth of coal. Alright, we'll max this stuff out as well. And we'll get some more iron plate. Ah, uh, let's get some small electrical poles. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, as soon as the first one's made, I'm going to shove it in here, a middle mouse button, to make sure that it stays in there. And as as you see when I'm placing these down, they've got a little blue, a blue outline on them. And that blue outline is the area that it can power when it's placed. So if we do that, then you can see we've got a little... Both of these will be powered. Um, additionally, if you are wanting to place these poles at the maximum length that they can be, because obviously they've got a certain length, as you can see, we come up to here and it's connected by a wire. Ah, oh, no, it's not connected by a wire. If you want to place them, what you can do is if you place one down, or hold left mouse button on the uh, where one's already placed, and just keep holding your button and run, it'll place them down at the maximum length that they can be placed, so you, you don't have to worry about placing them properly. Um, power poles are the only thing that does that, which is really annoying because um, you'll see later, I'll probably complain about it. The underground pipes do not do that, and they really should. And hopefully the uh, the devs will sort that out soon enough. Alright, so now what we've, do what we've done is we've got some power now. We've got electricity, which is pretty awesome. So what we'll want to do is get some electric mining drills up. So the reason that you want electric mining drills is they don't require coal to be constantly put into it. Basically they they use the the power that you get from shoving the coal over to these areas. Uh, they use the power you get from shoving the coal over into 
um, into your furnaces, etc., uh, into your uh, boilers and your steam engines, uh, which then creates the electricity, which then goes on to power something. So as you can see, these have started to kick in and we're powering this electric mining drill. If you click on an electric pole, you can see exactly how your power is going. So we've got four steam engines that are creating 90 kilowatts worth of power. You can see the production bar here and we're using one electric mining drill using 90 kilowatts worth of power. The only reason that these are creating only 90 kilowatts worth of power is because that's all we need. You can see the production bar here, 90 kilowatts worth of power is there. The most amount of power we can get is up to here. So we're only using a fraction of the amount of power that we can actually produce, uh, which is pretty awesome. But unfortunately, that's going to have to do us for this first episode. Do remember that if you've enjoyed this episode and you found it helpful, then drop a like down below and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more in the future. But I've been Studio, you've been awesome. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.